Hey, Alex here with another shaky cam video. And you know what that means. I've been too busy to tear down my stuff and set things up for a proper shoot or stop what I'm working on and work on something else. So I have a couple longer videos that are in the works. One's off topic, one's on topic, I guess. But I thought I would toss this one up here just um, because it's something I had to do and I'm trying to film more of those. And I'll give a little bit of a background and explanation and show you how I do it. In this case, it's gonna be soldering surface mount resistors, very small ones. And uh, the purpose was to fix the pull-up resistors on a uh, SCM32 board, the blue pill, if you're familiar with that one. They ship with the wrong pull-up resistors for USB. You need to swap them out. And there have been a lot of, you know, things on the internet that show you how to hack it and put a parallel resistor, like a, you know, regular through-hole resistor across the pins and things like that. And I, that's just too sloppy a solution for me. So here's how you can easily, with just regular old equipment that you have around, swap one of those out. So here we go. So this is what a blue pill looks like for those of you who don't know what I'm talking about. It's pretty much become my de facto test platform for basic Arduino programs for a few reasons I'll get into. First being that it's an ARM Cortex M3 32-bit processor with a 72 megahertz clock, which is much faster than the tiny little Arduinos, as well as having 128K of uh, SRAM for uh, ProgMem, which it's, it's supposed to be 68 on a lot of these. It's been 128 on all of them that I've tested. And it comes in a couple different versions, the blue pill, the black pill, the red pill, the green pill. And it is a clone, in quotes, of these, which are the Maple Mini board, of which I have very many. And that board is supported in the uh, Arduino IDE by the STM32 project. So any of the variants out there inherit from that. Now, although it does run off 3.3 volts, there are a whole lot of 5 volt tolerant pins and all the functions that you need for your Arduino are basically there plus some. In addition, it'll run a whole lot of crazy things, including Marlins. Yes, I'm serious. There's profiles for it in the firmware right now that you can fiddle around with. And I've made a couple different versions, mostly using the uh, Maple Mini um, with SD and LCD support and the whole nine yards. So that's not what this video is about, though. Now, another reason that they're my go-to is because they're so stinking cheap. Like for singles on AliExpress, you can get them for a buck 68, or you can get them for like 85 cents if you buy them 10 at a time. They're also not bad on Amazon. You can get them for like 650, which is still cheaper than a lot of the Arduinos, or you can get them in, you know, packs of two for 10, 11 bucks, or like packs of five for uh, 17 bucks, or you can get packs of five of like the full-on Maple Mini clones for like 15 bucks a piece. The ones I usually use are these bait clones, and uh, I'll put links to some of this stuff down in the description if you don't feel like fumbling around looking for them. One thing you will need for your initial setup is some kind of programmer, so like a ST-Link or an ST-Link clone, or you can get one of like the black pills that already has the uh, HID USB firmware built into it, or one of the Maple Mini clones, like the baits already have that firmware pre-flashed. Um, you can also use the little FTDI programmers like this or any old Arduino set up as a USB bridge. Now, the meat of this video is if you go to the SEM32 Duino project and look at the Blue Pill page, you might scroll down to the overview and see that under hardware installation, they have a note about the pull up resistor being incorrect. And they are right about that. It's usually either 10K or 4.7K. Usually I found it 10K, but you'll tell by looking at R10 and seeing if it reads 103. And this is what it looks like on the bottom. So this one that I have right here is definitely wrong. Now the way I do these is since they have the little uh, boot jumper pins, I just stick those into a breadboard and it keeps it from creeping around too much. You can put a piece of tape on that if you want it to stay down a little bit better. But regardless, right here you see R10 and that's what we're going to have to swap out. As a quality of life, you can also use solder wick and flux. That'll make your life a lot easier. And I'm going to steal one of the resistors off of this ramps board right here, one of the LED limiting resistors, because I just don't have surface mount resistors lying around and I have plenty of dead ramps boards, as you can see by the bad written on the power connector and all I'm going to do is heat up the left side and then I'm going to switch it over and I'm going to heat up the right side just for a few seconds and just push it off and you can see it pops right off and that's what it looks like tiny 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 and then use the same method for getting the uh, 10k resistor off of your uh, blue pill board and you can either reuse a solder that's on the pads, just heat it up and flow it until that it's sitting flat, or you can go ahead and use a solder wick and pull all that off there and then use flux to paint it down and put completely new solder on it. 
So then you're just going to take this, and what I do is I tack down one side just so that it's positioned relatively correctly, and it's not too crucial. Then once you have that straight as you want it, flip it over and solder down the second side, and I like to use a pair of tweezers as a heat sink so I don't overheat the resistor and change its value, and then flip it back to the first side that you tack down and do the permanent solder. And that's all you have to do. So we're good to go. You can use a multimeter to see if you were successful. Obviously it should read 1.5 or whatever resistor you put on there. And you obviously don't want to test the resistor itself unless you just want to check for the value, but uh, test what it's connected to or parts of the pads that are not touching the actual resistor. So now let me show you the more complete method where you use uh, flux and desoldering braid. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna swap resistors on this ramps board right here. So I'm gonna swap that one with one of the other ones. And uh, I'll do the complete method on this one. So same deal, you're just gonna heat up the one side and then heat up the other side until you can push it off. And don't hold your soldering iron down for more than like three or four seconds. It's better to go back and forth and heat them up slowly and pull that one off of there. Then we're going to use a desoldering braid to clean up those pads a little bit. So just lay it down on there and heat it up and that'll suck the solder on the pad right up into the braid so you don't have to worry about it anymore. Uh, and it should clean them up real nice. Then put a little soldering paste on there or liquid flux or whatever. I don't care what you paint it on with. I just happen to have this piece of cardboard lying around for this razor blade. So I'm just going to paint it on using the stupid cardboard triangle as a paintbrush. So uh, I'm just going to grab those pair of tweezers, scoop of tweezers, tweezers, scoop up a little bit of flux and paint that onto the contacts there. That'll additionally help the uh, keep the resistor from, you know, kind of jittering away when you're trying to get it placed there while you're... Uh, tacking down the first side. So then same thing, we're going to tin the end of our um, soldering iron with a little bit more solder than we did before, lay that down there, and when we do that, the flux is gonna pull the solder underneath the component, which is what we want, obviously. So flip that over again, and you can either, if you have enough solder left on your tip, just lay it down on the end and that'll pull it down there. We don't really need a whole lot for these resistors. Um, and then go ahead and do the, the final heat up and tack down, or you can use a very tiny little amounts of solder and that'll draw that underneath it. Then I'm gonna go ahead and test this, uh, not on the sides of the resistor again, I'm gonna test it at the LED and the power contact, and it should say somewhere around 1.8, and it does, which means we were successful. And this is what it looks like. Notice that the one on the left is a little bit smaller because that's the one that I pulled off of the um, blue pill board and it used a different footprint, but it's close enough that it fits on the pads just fine. Thanks for tuning in. Again, sorry about the shaky cam. I'll have a longer form video out soon. Let me get this in the center. There I am. I'll get a longer video out soon. And until then, get out there and make something awesome.